Today in part two of my Persona Studio 192 review, I'm going to be installing and setting up the interface. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now today I'm going to be installing the Persona Studio 192 interface. I've got to take my old gear out and put this in, then set up the drivers, that kind of thing. So it'll be interesting to see how smoothly that goes. Now if you missed my first video, in that I talked about why I actually chose this particular interface. So that might be worth you checking out if you're looking for a new interface and you're thinking about getting something like this. So now I'm going to get my screwdriver in hand and get stuck in. So having installed my hardware and everything's working fine, I went ahead, went to the Presonus uh, website, downloaded the drivers. Um, I downloaded them the first time and then I noticed they weren't the most up-to-date ones. So I went and grabbed the most up-to-date ones, downloaded them. They told me it needed a firmware update. So I did that. And I decided not to show you all that in the end because it's pretty boring and pretty straightforward. It all went fine. I didn't have any problems and my hardware is completely up and running. I've had a little chance to play around with the main software so that I'm able to tell you a few things about it. It's called Universal Control. I'll click on it now. So when you uh, start Universal Control, this is your sort of main interface. A couple of things here which are going to be of interest to you are setting the sample rate. Um, I always record at 48 kilohertz, but you can go all the way up to 192 kilohertz. That may affect the performance, um, so I tend just tend not to do that because I don't really get think there's an appreciable difference in quality. Um, then there is the block size, which is really helpful to adjust if you're getting uh, latency problems and that kind of thing. Um, so there's a lot of other um, sort of features in or options in here, pretty mundane stuff. So I'm not really going to show those to you because they're pretty self-explanatory if you go through them. What you really want to see is the main mixer control and you get to that by clicking on your device down here. And that brings up the main mixer interface. Now, one thing I really appreciate about this is that you can actually go full screen with it couldn't do that with my old Focusrite software. So uh, that's actually quite handy and quite nice. Now that I've gone full screen, I'm actually going to switch off my webcam so that you can see this in its entirety. So bye bye. Okay, so now we've got rid of me off the screen. Let me just explain something here uh, about these muted channels um, so that I can actually allow you to hear what I'm hearing as I adjust things. I've actually done a patch lead around the back of it some to, from some outs to some ins so that you can actually hear exactly what I'm doing. Um, so obviously you wouldn't normally have that and that's why these meters are going up and down as I talk. So that wouldn't normally be set like that, it's just for this video and it's just the easiest way for me to do it. So looking at the main area here, this should be very familiar to you, it's a mixer. Um, the faders control the volume um, that you can hear either through your headphones or through your speakers. They don't control the gain on the channel. Uh, the gain on the channel is adjusted actually up in this area. You can see it's on mic one at the moment because I've got that selected and I can adjust the pre here. So if I start dragging this down, I will get quieter and quieter and quieter even though I'm still talking and I'll go back up to a level where you can hear me nicely. As you can see, I can also switch off and on my phantom power here. And what's really interesting about this, as I go through each channel, I'll go to mic two, is you do actually have a phantom power control over each of the main inputs. That's eight of them all together. That's a little unusual for me coming from the focus right and other um, interfaces I've seen. In fact, I think even some of the other Presonus ones only allow you to switch the phantom power off and on in sort of banks of four. Um, and there's nothing too problematic about that, but it is a nice to have that you can control it on a channel by channel basis. There's also a stereo linking so that you can join say channel one and two together as a pair and control them as a pair. Um, and that's useful when you're stereo miking things or you have things like keyboards say, which have a stereo output you have a gate, a compressor, an equalizer, and a limiter. Now, what does all this mean? So you can have these um, processes switched on so that you can hear them um, 
as you're recording with no latency so they're actually happening on the audio interface itself not in your computer and that means you can have those nice things going on in your headphones now you could just have them in your headphones or you could also choose to print them to your door so there is an option there i probably wouldn't do that so much because um it seems like you've you may commit too early but some people like to record like that. You do actually have this fat channel for all of your main eight inputs. So you can have, you know, these completely separate values and settings for each channel. That's really kind of like having, you know, eight outboard, um, you know, hardware compressors and gates and things, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. So that's very, very useful. And I'll go back to this high pass filter in a minute. I'm going to turn my equalizer on, on channel one. And now I'll adjust the high pass filter over here. You can see it changing in the equalizer. And if I go all the way up, then it should be changing the sound for you. So um, lots of nice things happening over here. Uh, if I just adjust this up here, you can see it's switched onto a high shelf there. Or you can just have it in the sort of regular mode um, you can do your cue all oops if i go over here you can do your cue all that kind of stuff that you'd normally expect um, on an equalizer these days um, gates is really useful if you've got sort of noisy signals something like that uh, or some background noise that you want to get rid of compressors of course um, it acts very much like the regular studio one um, compressor that you may be familiar with I think it's a really really nice sort of interface easy to understand um, EQ I've shown you and the limiter over here which I'll switch on and I'll keep bringing it down and down and down and down and it should be really cutting my signal now which it is and I'll bring that back up okay so that is your fat channel as i say um you can control whether you actually print that or whether it's just in your headphone mix later i'll be showing you in studio one how you have access to this from studio one itself without having to go out to this extra software um now that we've looked at that sort of main mixer let's have a look at the effects you really have two uh, basic effects which you can use. Um, I'm going to just click on the effects button up here and go over to effects A here and you'll see um, we've got a reverb on here. And in actual fact, there's, there's a few different choices of reverb um, and some of them behave in quite different ways. Um, and once you've selected which kind of reverb you want in effects A here, you can go down to effects a and you can start to mix it into that channel so i'm bringing it up here and now you can hear that lovely large ball reverb and with a few basic controls here so uh effects a is a reverb or a few different reverbs to choose from really quite handy um for a performer like a singer who's going to sing and they want to get a feel um for how they're going to sound in the mix you know which could really help their performance um and the other one is effects b which is a delay i've got it switched to the stereo delay at the moment but there's a few different ones to choose from and if i go to effects B over here, I can do the same and start to, start to, to start mix to, that, to, that, to, that, mix to, that, to, mix that. It's a really, it's long, a really delay. long delay. It's a really long delay. It's a really long delay. <laughs> 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 something about delays i could just play with them for hours so um there you have those effects which can be heard again in your mix as you record with no latency because all of that processing is happening on board on the audio interface rather than happening in your computer so these are massive massive bonuses i feel over my previous um, audio interface um a few other things are things like if i go over here um, it has a really nice um, control for speakers so if you've got several um, speakers um, plugged in which you should do you should have your main monitors but then some sort of more average um, ordinary speakers and perhaps a subwoofer on a, on a separate output um, then you can actually set this up so you can switch between them now because I'm recording this on the screen at the moment I've got a particular setup I'm not going to switch for you and you wouldn't hear the difference anyway but this is a really really handy feature 
Um, and you can also over here um, choose which mix, mix you send to each of the two headphones as well as um, some control over uh, your talkback level. And that's another little handy feature, which I should mention now. You do have a talkback um, system on this um, audio interface and you operate it by clicking talk. And when you click talk, your talkback mic will go through um, to wherever you choose to send it to. You can um, choose on here to send it to uh, various different places. It does actually have a mic built into the unit right on the front of it. I haven't really tried it yet. I probably am going to use um, a spare microphone I've got kicking around and use one of my channels for it. Uh, but a really, really handy feature, something which I will actually use quite often. Now, as well as having your main mix, which we've been uh, playing around with here, you also have a number of different mixes. As you can see here, there's the main mix, mix one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for your main outputs on the back and then all of your ADAT outputs. Um, that's very, very useful indeed. Not only uh, can you have different mixes, but you can actually store them. So that's called scenes, I believe. So if I go over here and click on scenes, once you've set up some different mixes, say for example, I've got a standard mix that I have set up when I'm uh, tracking someone else in another room and I want to set a headphone mix for them, I can store that and easily bring it back later. So you can store up to eight different scenes. Um, very, very handy. I'll probably be using it um, for regular recording and also for when I'm recording videos like this, which is quite a different setup. Now, you've also got this option over here, which is some presets for your um, for your fat channel. Um, and they've got some actually factory um, presets, but you can also uh, set your own user presets. So again, a very, very handy feature. That is really um, the basis um, of this sort of control system. I'll switch my webcam back on now so that you can see me. Um, and um, I've just used it really probably for about an hour and a half or so. I just found it very, very quick and easy to get into. Uh, no bugs uh, so far for me. Um, uh, there's a few things about this which I haven't covered, but this is your basics. All in all, a pretty good design. Um, I'm very excited that all of these features are going to be available to me on my iPad when I'm working in another room. And I will be covering that as well as integration with Studio One in my third and final video for this little series about the Studio 192. So thanks for watching today and I hope to see you in the next video.